Welcome everybody to tonight's Fit Talk. I am Maven McKenzie and I co-host this show with the lovely Clinesia Pritchard. Um, we started this Fit Talk as a way to kind of reach out to more people and to just have a greater platform to get our tips out there, to get advice, and just to have open and honest conversation about fitness is really all about and not be so uptight and not be understanding that it can be really difficult. It can be confusing, it can be hard, but with the right support and, you know, with open and honest communication amongst friends that, you know, we can affect more change and that we can help end the trend of obesity. And, you know, we can make better choices for our own lives and also influence the lives of those around us. So as I said, I am Deva. I have been a health and fitness coach for about two years now. Um, I got started after losing 50 pounds myself on my own journey. And I've since gotten certified in nutrition classes. I've become a size live instructor. Um, I've helped countless people lose. Um, I don't even know how much weight. That might be a fun task just to see how many pounds clients have lost. But it has just been an awesome journey for me because um, I really find fulfillment in helping other people. But at the end of the day, it's really made me a better person, a better friend, a better mom, um, a better daughter, a better sister, all of the above. Um, so Clinicia, do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Sure. You always move me to tears, Deva. My goodness. <laughs> like Deva said, my name is Clinicia. You can also call me KP. Um, and I'm also a health and fitness coach. I have uh, been a health and fitness coach for just under a year, and I absolutely love it. Um, in this time, I've also had a chance to become a certified Pio Live instructor, which has been amazing. I really just love having the opportunity to work with people to meet their fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, putting on some weight, just fitting health and fitness into their lifestyle uh, in a way that you know, makes them just feel a difference. Um, and so I just, I feel so fulfilled every single day when I get to work with all of my clients. Um, and I love being able to have this platform with Deva every single week to share with a broader audience like all of you guys, because like Deva said, we definitely have a lot of passion for health and fitness and we love that we can share our tips and tricks with you guys. Um, and just allow you guys too to share our tips with other people. So we hope that every single week as you watch, you're learning something and you're able to share the recordings uh, with other people or bring people to future recordings. Um, so glad to have you. So Allison, you are our guest host tonight. We are so happy to have you. Can you introduce yourself to the rest of the crew out here? Hi guys, yeah, so thank you to Deva and Kinesia for letting me join in on the call. Um, so excited to join you guys. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I am a personal trainer and a uh, coach. I've been doing health coaching, online health coaching for almost six years in October, which is crazy. Um, and I've been doing personal training for two years now. Yeah, about two years. Um, I'm also a certified um, precision nutrition coach as well. Um, my journey pretty much started because I uh, literally was just unhealthy, um, unhappy, and, you know, just kind of wanted to change my body and wanted something. And I kind of got started by simply just going through the process of working on myself. I started blogging. I started posting stuff on social media. And it really just got to a really cool place where I, I've kind of come to now, where this is what I do full-time training and coaching. And it's uh, been a great journey. And I'm so excited to be here and talk to you guys about a topic that I think there's a lot of misinformation about and there's a lot of things that you know happen I think this is a platform to uh talk to talk about i'm really glad to have allison on um for those of you who don't know allison has been a really big part of my training in becoming a coach so she's not only my mentor she's my best friend now so i just love that i get to have like my abs gold mentor <laughs> as our special guest for this call. But first, let's get into what we talked about last week. Last week was kind of where we talked about all of these quick fixes, right? 
and the main thing to get away from that is that your body cannot be tricked into becoming strong, lean, healthy, or athletic, right? There is no magic pill. So we kind of really harped on the fact that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But at the end of the day, there are a couple appropriate uses for some of these quick fixes. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm not a celebrity. I don't have anything that I need to be getting ready for at the drop of a hat where I'm going to invest for something that's not permanent. I'd rather be investing in a long-term health goal than be looking at that greater picture of you know getting stronger, getting off medication, um, improving cholesterol, all of those things you can't get from. Um, a wrap or a waist trainer or some detox tea, right? So that really kind of brings us into uh -oh. talking about ads are made in the kitchen. Because as we talked about before with nutrition, it's really good. So you can't trick your body into being stronger, into being leaner, into being healthier. There is no magic pill. There's nothing that you can buy or invest like a ton of money in to get you those results. There is no waist trainer, no wrap, no cream, no detox tea that's really going to do it for you. And at the end of the day, if you're going to be investing your money into something, I'd rather invest my money into something that is going to get me long-term results, that it's going to, you know, help co uh, control my cholesterol or get my blood pressure under control or, um, you know, lower my diabetes, get me off of medication. Um, at the end of the day, you really have to look at the big picture and let go of those quick fixes, which really kind of brings us into tonight's topic in talking about as they're made in the kitchen. We've said plenty of times on the show before about how you really have to start with a foundation of the nutrition. That is going to be the base everything is built off of. Then you can add supplements. Then you can add, you know, targeting and toning and all these things. Um, so with that, Tony, do you want to kick us off into this topic tonight? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for starting with that adage that tabs are made in the kitchen, guys. Um, there's something that we refer to in the health and fitness community as the 80-20 rule of beauty. Now, you guys may have heard of the 80-20 rule before or the Pareto principle. It's, you know, a long time ago was... Uh, used to refer to economics um, and, you know, just over the past decades has been used to describe a number of things from science to business, but it can also be used to describe how you should uh, look at your health and fitness, right? So we use it to say your diet really makes up the majority of the change that you're going to see in your health and fitness, okay? Okay. So 80% of any change you'll see will come from getting your diet on point. It doesn't matter if you are on the floor every single day doing a thousand punches. If your diet is not on point, you're not going to see any benefit from it, okay? And so I'm so glad that Dave was you know, what we talked about last week with the quick fixes, how you really do just have to put the work in. You have to. You can't just focus so much on, oh, I want abs, so I need to do this move. And I think so many people are. Um, Allison and David, I'd love to hear from both of you. Um, what what have you experienced with your clients um, as far as you know them wanting to get? I know for me, I have so many people that come to me and they're like, Let me, my only goal is to bite my tummy. It's my problem area. I want abs, and I'll say, well, what have you been doing? Well, you know, I do a lot of I do a lot of crunches at the gym and I'll be like, well, what have you been eating? Well, you know, my diet's not that good, but, you know, I definitely work on my abs. I work on my abs at the gym a lot. And I'm like, OK, well, we have a place to start right now. What what do you guys experience when you talk to some of your clients? Um, I, mean, I, I hear a lot of that. I mean, I think the, the thing when it comes to um, abs and comes to things like that, I think a lot of people think that they can out exercise a bad diet and they think that, you know, and, and to be honest, when I was younger, I mean, I'm in my thirties now, so I can't quite do that anymore. But, um, you know, I thought I can, I would work out to eat whatever I wanted. 
And you know, that really was something that just doesn't make sense. You can't out exercise a bad diet. And, um, you know, I think that's uh, the biggest misconception that people have. And it really does sabotage a lot of their results. I think that's one part of it. And I think the other flip side of it, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but it's that when people are actually, I'm jumping ahead, so I don't say that. But um, yeah, you know, your, your diet is, you know, pretty, like on my Facebook page, I posted a before and after picture and the before picture is right before I did the 21 day fit or the 21 day ultimate reset. And, you know, that's when my abs came in after that, you know, I'd been working hard doing insanity, doing all this stuff. It wasn't until I got my nutrition on track that my core really started to reflect what I wanted. So if your nutrition is, is not on point, then, you know, unless you have really strong genetics, um, you know, you're, you're pretty much at a disadvantage there. Yeah. And I love that. Mom. I see a lot of yeah. people talk about how they want to get rid of that like mom pouch or um, there's certain areas like they want to get rid of, you know, the rolls on their sides or their, they will see whatever move like self magazine or like Lammer posted that month or, you know, that week and, you know, this is the move that's going to target that area. So they do that move like a ridiculous amount of times and they don't see any results. And I'm like, well, you know, you're building the muscle. And you're probably actually making that area worse <laughs> because the muscle's growing, but you're not doing anything to target the fat that's on top of it. I'm like, you really want to get rid of the fat that's on top, not build the muscle. You probably have really great muscles underneath. Um, and I know with me personally, because I'm still on my journey and still trying to get to my goal weight, um, I've seen better changes in my body from getting my nutrition on track and eating clean than I have with um, doing any you know, exercise program or hitting the gym any, you know, with any regularity or consistency. If I can consistently eat clean, I will like, you know, I'll see the hourglass start coming in and I'm like, ooh, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I love that you said that. And I feel the same way. Like, Allison, you did the, the 21 day reset. When every time I do the three day refresh, you know, that's only three days long, but I can see such a difference when all that goes down, I can start to see, you know, my abs popping out. And so it's, it's very clear that diet makes the biggest difference. Because, you know, just like I mentioned, I could do as many crunches or this move or that move that I want to do. But I'm not making a difference if my diet isn't on point. And Dave, I love that you, you brought up targeting different areas. But we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the conversation. Right now, what I'd love to talk about is, um, some tips, because I think people, okay, yes, we understand that abs are made in the kitchen. We understand that we need to eat healthier, but what does that even mean? Allison, can you, can you give people some tips on how they can tweak their diet to really maximize their whatever results they want to see? Sure. I mean, I think there's a couple of different things when it comes to your diet. Um, I think, first of all, one of the things that kind of drives me up the wall is people doing, and I, I'm sure you talked about the quick fix and everything last week, but when people are like, well, I'm not going to eat carbs, or I'm not going to eat this, or I'm not going to eat that, um, from a very nuclear level, our bodies need fats, proteins, and carbs. Without those three things, our body does not function. It, it will shut down and it will use other things. So when you start taking away one thing or limiting one thing and it's not really giving enough fuel, your body starts to do some more crazy things. Your hormones have to get out of whack. Your your body's chemistry just can't do what it needs to do. And you see fat stores, you know, in the stomach. We see our body holding on to things. And you know, that's something that you have to really understand. It's really about being well-rounded with your nutrition, um, cutting out stuff, or, you know, doing these really bad diets. All it's going to do is bring the weight down or you're, you're just going to be very frustrated um, with that process. So, you know, the first thing is just focus on eating clean. You know, if you don't know how to eat healthy or what to do, you know, your first thing is just to clean up your diet, get the junk out of your diet. I mean, most of the times people are struggling and getting, you know, their bodies right. It's because they're just putting food food into their body. You know, I, I did a, a, I spoke at a conference a few weeks ago 
Atlantic City and I said, if your food is coming out of a blue box with, you know, pasta shaped like a shell with liquid gold cheese sauce, like that's not food. Your body doesn't know what to do with that. Um, so here's a tip. If you are like, I don't know what to eat or whatever, focus on when you go grocery shopping, shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. 80% of your food should be clean, coming from lean protein, produce, dairy, deli, seafood. Um, you know, that's where your most of your food should come from because that's food. You know, food that's stuck in the middle of the aisle, Lord knows how long it's been there and Lord knows how long it's meant to be there and what's been put there to keep it on the shelf. So, you know, those are things to think about. Um, I think too, it's also understanding your body type um, you know, there are certain people that are, you know, prone to um, having a higher tolerance for carbohydrates versus those who have a low tolerance for carbohydrates. So you have to also kind of understand that a little bit more as well. Um, so understanding your body type is really important and knowing like, oh, you know, you know, these foods don't really work that well for me. I feel bloated or whatever the case may be. Um, and then knowing when and how to eat. Um and, and portions, you know, portion control is important. You know, for example, for me, when I first started, when quinoa became like the, the new thing, I ate quinoa with every single meal and I got very fluffy and puffy because I was eating too much quinoa, which I thought was this complete protein, superfood from Peru. It's amazing. It's going to change my life. And it did. It made me fluffy. Um, so... I had to learn portion control. Even too much of a good thing is still, you know, difficult. Um, knowing when to eat. So for me, um, I do a lot of my carbs after I work out. I don't eat a lot of carbs before I work out. Um, I like to do them after. My body just responds better to that um, after because I'm putting my body in a fat zone. So when I eat carbs, my body can attack the carbs to burn off the rest of the energy and let my body, you know, absorb the protein. Um, and other things like that. So it definitely is a great way to just kind of understand your body a bit more, eating well-rounded meals. Don't limit, you know, the basic stuff. Get the fruits and veggies. Um, but just really eating clean, you know, and cutting the junk out and just paying attention, eat when you're hungry. Um, but, yeah, cutting the junk out and, and really being diligent with your food definitely is important for sure if you want any – any type of resemblance of abs, you need to check your nutrition. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Deva? Um, Allison kind of like hit on everything. I think that portion control element is really huge. And also um, knowing when to eat, um, whether it be nutrient timing or just in the eating small frequent meals, um, which is a really hard concept for some people to get in. I know for me, when I'm stressed, I'm a stressed not eater. Some people are stressed eaters and, you know, they, you need to look out for them because they're going to grab everything. When I'm stressed, I'm not going to eat anything. And then by the end of the day, I'm going to want to binge on something because I'm going to want, I am going to want comfort food from the stress I had and B, I'm going to be so hungry from not having eaten all day that I'm going to want like a big, like unhealthy type of meal. So for me, before I became a nutrition coach, this was something that I was repeatedly doing sending my body into starvation mode, then giving it a whole bunch of fatty food, and then wondering why I'm gaining weight, even though on my fitness pal, it said I only had, you know, under 8,000 calories for the day. And I'm like, well, I thought I did good. It said I was going to lose, you know, 20 pounds in the next 20 days. What, what, what went wrong? Um, and it was because I was sending my body into starvation mode. So when I did eat, it was storing everything I ate as if it was never going to eat again. It was like, Psh, I can't mess with you because I don't know when you're going to feed me next. And I don't blame it for doing that. But eating small, frequent meals keeps your metabolism on and keeps it burning. Your body knows that you're constantly giving it fuel. Keeping, your, keeping moving and like just doing 30-minute exercises every day, you're burning through those foods. So that's also kind of when that nutrient timing comes in, like Allison was saying. Knowing when to eat carbs, knowing when to put the protein back in your system so you're rebuilding, you know, everything that you lost and making sure you have fuel to really push in the workout. Um, and a lot of those things are new for people. That, oh, I bet you a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, huh, what? Like, I don't know when's the right time. 
that's why you get a coach so that they can help you and that they can tell you this is when you need to do xyz this is what you need to do after your workout this is what you need to do before you should eat like every two to three hours um i had a friend of mine just asked me about the three-day refresh and she like, you know, I am ready to get my health and fitness under control. And I saw you do this three-day refresh and I'm hearing a lot about it. I think I'm ready, but I'm just nervous. And I was like, listen, the only hard part for me was when I was not eating every two to three hours. When I hit hour four, I was hangry. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, where's the kitchen? Don't talk to me until I get my asparagus. Once I have my asparagus, we can be friends again. Um, but other than that, it was good and I felt great. I lost weight and I wasn't unhappy. I wasn't unpleasant. Everything went well, but it's just this concept of, you know, you need to time everything out just like you would the rest of your schedule. You time out when you're going to go to bed, when you're going to wake up, when you go to work, when you take your break, you know, you know, when you get that 15 or when you get that lunch break, so why don't you know when you're going to eat and what you're going to eat then? I guess that's it. That was a lot of preaching. <laughs> you took us back to our meal planning and meal prep conversations and the importance of those things and just helping you make the best decisions and you not getting into a place where you're so stressed out or having a bad day and you just, you know, go and grab the first thing you find. No, when you have that plan, you can make sure that you stay on point no matter what's going on. And that's also why I kind of really like Allison's nutrition that she posts about, because yeah. um, for me, eating something bad was comforting. The food Allison posts looks so good. I'm like, yo, I can eat clean and still feel comforted. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a really big misconception. People always think, oh, if I change my diet and start eating healthy, then I'm just eating celery and carrots as long, and that's gross. No, I have not in a person ask me if I'm eating rabbit food. <laughs> and that's why I post like, that stuff, you know, so people yeah. can do that, you know, it's like, it's not be because this is yummy. <laughs> it's delicious, guys. I think all of us here can attest to the fact that if, if healthy food was disgusting, we wouldn't be in the place we are right now. It's true. You know? I, There's I only the way to make it taste good. I can't with you. I, I, I choose <laughs> on bad food, okay? <laughs> so, but like with hitting the core and you know, really getting those abs in, I feel like people are like, well, that sounds all well and good, but how do I get the abs? If I eat clean, I'm just going to lose weight all over. I really want to target the abs. So, Konej, I want you to answer this question. Can I spot reduce? <laughs> Oh, question of the day. I don't know how many people come and they say, oh, Clinique, I just want to get rid of these love handles. <laughs> like, how do I target my, my lower abs? Guys, you want to target your entire body. There's no such thing as spot reducing. Tell me, be honest. Those of you who tried, have you been successful? I guarantee it's probably a no. You really need to focus on the body. And I know in other other shows we've talked about this a little bit, saying that you know maybe you want booty or maybe you want nice legs, but you're not just going to work those muscles only. You have to really focus on a total body workout. Um, and yes, you want to focus on you know making your core strong, but you even know what your core consists of. Everybody just focuses on those muscles in the very front, right? But do you think about you know, your sides, your obliques, you think about your back, do you know that your back is a part of your core? And you need to have a strong back to have a healthy core as well. So you want to focus holistically on everything. You don't just want to say, oh, let me do this one move over and over so I can get, you know, my, my great abs. So no, there's no such thing as spot reduction. Um, and David, I know you're going to talk about this a little bit more um, a little bit later on in the conversation, but you guys really want to focus on having a good amount of um, cardio and your, um, your you know, total core strengthening moves because you really want that cardio to help you guys 
burn that fat off, you know, that's covering up those abs. And then your whatever ab moves that you're doing are just strengthening those muscles all around your core. And so you need those things together. Yeah. You cannot just focus on, on one move over and over and over again, because I promise you, you're not going to see the results that you want. You're wasting your time and you're getting close to hurting yourself if you're doing too much of the same thing. So Deva, I, I think a lot of people get, um, like when they don't see the results that they want to see, they tend to give up. And that's when you kind of start to hear everybody being like, well, you know, it's fine. You know, I, I like myself like this. And they go and they eat whatever they want. They stop working out. Why is it so dangerous to have fat collecting around your core area? I, I feel like, you know, this is something that I've said to people a lot, but I don't know if people really understand how dangerous it is to carry weight around your core, especially. I feel like you hit on a couple dangerous things. Like it's dangerous to even have that mindset, right? Um, it's dangerous to have that mindset in health and fitness. It's dangerous to have that mindset in business and anything you're trying to achieve if you want to be successful, to have that mindset of, I don't see results, I'm going to give up or I'm just going to revert back to what was already not working. Are you kidding? Um, I'm a little fired up. I don't know. I did a lot of PD today. <laughs> But it's like, why are you going to throw away that momentum? Why are you going to revert back? And, you know, you made it from zero to 10. You may not have gotten to 100, but why that go back to negative five? You know, you leave it to 11, at least get to 12. Focus on the bigger picture and don't focus on the current failure. Um, and that was one of my main takeaways um, from my personal development today in reading the 10X rule. Um, was to focus on the bigger picture and not the failure at the moment. Um, but really, having fat around your midsection is very dangerous. And I think it's something that people think of as a um, aesthetic thing of not being good. Like nobody wants to, you know, have fat around their belly. Um, nobody wants to, you know, women don't want to look like they're pregnant when they're not pregnant or, you know, get the comments or the the backhanded compliments um, or anything like that. Guys don't want the beer gut. You know, it's just starting to get closer to summer. It's, you know, again, six pack season with their admin in the kitchen. But really, it speaks to greater health risk. Um, it really carries with it like a strong risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Um, even some types of cancer are really linked to having fat around the middle. But it's this visceral fat, the fat that um, is, is trapped in that section, um, that releases toxins back into your system. It's like your body stores it in that fat and it's perpetually bringing it back into your system, which brings about health concerns. Um, there's things like metabolic syndrome, which um, is a cluster of different um, health concerns. And when you have multiple, all linked together. I think it's like if you have two out of the three or three out of the four, um, you're considered to have metabolic syndrome. Um, it really spells like you need to take this seriously. You're going to have diabetes. You're going to have heart disease. You're going to have high cholesterol. And it, I think for women, it ties with a, um, a waist of 30 inches or more. So it's like if you have three out of the four of those things, it's like hello, wake up. <laughs> you need to get it together. You need to be taking more steps with your health and fitness or you're going to die at a young age. And it's really sad and really morbid to think about, but it really should be a wake up call for people to take their health and fitness a little bit more seriously. I mean, I know this was one of the biggest things for me in wanting to get fit was to try and postpone or delay or you know, not even have to deal with it any of those things that come with, you know, a family history that has all of the above that I just listed in there. Um, but it, it, it's dangerous. And then another hard part is that when you are stressed, a lot of your fat collects around the middle. So relieving stress is going to be a really big deal. And like I said, when, when you have stress, you tend to collect a plethora of bad habits, whether that being with your eating, with your nutrition, with your fitness. Um, you really have to get it under control at that point. Allison, I see you nodding. Do you yeah. want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you, you kind of know it, but I think that, you know, 
our bodies, when our bodies start reacting to doing certain things, it's just the body signaling that something's wrong or something's off. Um, and, you know, one thing about like your metabolism and, and hormones is once you start playing around with that, it's very difficult to go back to a normal level or a normal level. Um, so if you can prevent really wrecking your hormones or wrecking your metabolism. And as we get older, our metabolism slows down. So also learning how to eat and do different things for your body um, to help keep your metabolism moving and going, it's really important too, for sure. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, it has to be beyond the aesthetic. The things that you do for your health and fitness can't be just to look good. Um, at the end of the day, it's your health that you're working towards. And a great side effect is that you're probably going to look amazing in your bathing suit when you get yourself together. But at the end of the day, this is all about how healthy you are from the inside out. Absolutely. Yeah, that was awesome, guys. Um, Allison, thank you so much for joining this conversation tonight. Um, you, you know, we call you our ab role model. So we definitely look to you as far as, um, you know, giving those good tips on, you know, how it is that you're able to, one, cook all these amazing meals and still, you know, have your health and fitness on point. And so any of you guys out there, if you are not following Allison on Instagram, I beg you to do so. You will not be unhappy. Do you have a couple of handles? Do you want to share them with, with everyone, Allison? Um, I mean, pretty much you can... It's like where to follow me? Yeah. Um, on Facebook, Allison Tips Fitness. Um, that's where I post a lot of all of my recipes. Will always go to that page first. Um, on Instagram, you can follow me at, at Allison Tips. On Twitter, at Allison Tips. And if you just want to look at my food, um, I have a feature Instagram account that's um, I Cook Clean. So if you want to check out that, just definitely go there. But that's really where I, I typically post all my recipes. So sharing is caring. So. Yeah. No, I promise you guys are going to be begging to eat clean after you see her recipes, right, Deva? Uh, I'll be making garlic noodles tonight. So spicy garlic noodles tonight, which are vegan and gluten free, but actually very delicious. Allison, I have a special request. Um, I don't know if you feel comfortable doing this or not, but can we see your abs? Oh, man, that's pressure. <laughs> Uh, sure, I guess. Yeah, let's do it. Oh man, this is a lot of pressure. Hopefully, the lighting doesn't. Let's see here. All right, sorry, mom, if you're watching. <laughs> Make sure everything was like in order. Okay, I guess it's stand. I don't know. Perfect. We can see that. This is not a problem, Allison. And I didn't flex, so my mom would also be happy. I didn't flex. <laughs> I can't Ugh, I got work to do. See you she in the gym tomorrow. So well, Planasia. She was like, I don't know if the lighting's gonna be good or if you guys can see that. Because so. I have my window open. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we better than the last time that. I saw them actually. <laughs> Seriously. The photos don't do it them justice. The video definitely was to go. <laughs> So, Quinesia, what are we talking about next week? And is Allison coming back? I don't know. Let's see if she wants to. So, next week, guys, we're going to be talking about fad diets. And, you know, last week we talked about quick fixes. And next week we're going to spend some more time diving a little deeper into different types of diets. So, Allison mentioned earlier how people will sometimes cut fat or cut carbs. We're going to talk about all these different things. Um, Atkins, South Beach, Slim Fast. Whatever it is, we're going to try to dive in and tell you a little bit about them. If you have experience using any of these fad diets, we definitely encourage you guys to come and join the conversation next week. We'd love to hear your experience. Um, you know, this is an interactive show, so we've got, you know, we haven't tried every single thing. So we'd love to invite people to kind of share their stories as well. So we invite you guys to come and join that conversation next week. Same time, same place, 9 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Blab. Thanks again for joining. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. This was fun.